Welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. Today we got some more actual history for you from this book right here, Indian Depredations in Texas by J.W. Wellbarger, published all the way back in 1889. Now today's story takes place in Grayson County, Texas. It's about a man by the name of Doherty and his plight with the Indians. There is now living in Grayson County, or was two years ago, an old man whose record for bravery tells that he had once fought the Indians single-handed and alone, saving his own life and that of a boy who was with him. It will not be out of place now to narrate the circumstances, for they occur next in the list of tragedies in Grayson County after the murder of Josiah Washburn. After that happened, almost in their midst, there was a general scattering and removal of the settlers from Bodark, and among the first to move away was one by the name of Thomas. He and his father-in-law with their families selected the site for their future home below Bonham, and about twelve miles from Bodark, taking with them their household goods and cattle, leaving their crops to mature and taking chances of remaining undisturbed until crop time. In the following fall, Thomas and his father-in-law, Doherty, decided to take a trip over to the old place and gather their corn, if there was any, and kill their hogs if they could find them, taking with them a boy about eight years of age. On arriving there, they were agreeably disappointed in finding everything in good order, and immediately went to work. They had finished the job without molestation from the Indians, and were about ready to start for home when the little boy came running from the cotton patch, where he had been gathering some stray bowls of cotton, crying that the Indians were coming. Before they could make their escape or defend themselves, the Indians fired upon them, wounding the old man Doherty. They all ran into the house, where Thomas returned the fire of the Indians with good effect, until his ammunition was reduced to one charge. Seeing no way of escape only by taking the most desperate chances, he told Doherty to hide, as he was too badly wounded to travel, and taking an axe handle in one hand and his gun in the other, he placed the boy in front of him and started out. With a yell of astonishment and satisfaction, the Indians rushed upon him, only to be met with blows as they fell thick and fast from hands, nerved to desperation. He fought his way right and left through the bloodthirsty Indians and succeeded in getting as far as the road, some distance from the house, when he told the boy to run for his life. This the little fellow did, although badly wounded by a stray bullet intended for his brave defender. Thomas succeeded in beating back and eluding the Indians and overtaking the boy. They made fast time for home where they arrived exhausted, but with their scalps in good order. But the poor old man was not so fortunate. While Thomas was fighting his way out, he saw Doherty on his hands and knees, creeping under the house, and thought he was hiding and would be all right, as the Indians were paying all their attention to him and were not noticing the movements of the wounded man. But after the Indians had left him, probably thinking he bore a charmed life, he heard the sound of the old man's gun. Knowing that something was wrong and realizing how powerless he was to aid him, he hastened on for help. Arriving at home, he immediately gathered as many of the settlers as he could, and as soon as possible returned to rescue the wounded man. But it was too late. They found him tomahawked and scalped. The gun and horses were gone and no sign of Indians dead or wounded. They had cleared out and emboldened by the success of this attack, they were probably planning where to strike next. So that's the end of this story. This is another one that occurred back in Grayson County, shortly following the murder of Josiah Washburn. So this was the murder of Doherty, and afterwards this caused a great flight of the settlers from that region. So if you want to hear more episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you here next time on Unworthy History.